guard. Hands it off to Wick. Running left. That's not going to do it. The Spartans win it. The tackle made in the backfield by Christian Tago. for the Spartans on the high plains of Laramie, Wyoming, beat the Cowboys on their home turf. Welcome back to Mountain West Football Media Days, live from the Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas, continuing our conversation with the student athletes of the West Division. We're pleased to be joined by the Spartans of San Jose State, Tyler Irvin and Christian Tago. Pre uh, appreciate you guys making some time for us here on the Mountain West Network. Last season, 3-9 and nine overall for San Jose State, 2-6 and six in the Mountain West, finished fifth in the West Division. This year you returned 17 starters, nine on offense, six on defense, and your kicker and your punter. You two are key returners for the Spartans in 2015. Tyler, let's start with you. Um, one of the most versatile players in the Mountain West. She, they try to find a way to get the ball in your hands in, in a number of ways, whether it be a, a return man, as a running back, a receiver. Um, what is your favorite role to play for this team as we enter the 2015 season? You know, um, I don't think I have so much of a favorite role. You know, I like to do a lot of different things that will help the team. So whatever it takes, whether it's, you know, doing the punt return or being a running back, I'm willing to do. So I don't think I have too much of a favorite type of thing. A number of times last year, you get the ball, you, you make a few cuts, and, and you're gone. Game-breaking speed. We're looking at some video of you right now against UNLV and you're just running away from guys. How adrenalizing is that to hit a hole, see it open, and nobody's there, and you've got nothing but green ahead of you. Yeah, sometimes you just kind of have to have tunnel vision. Uh, like, because I used to run track in high school, and it's basically to stay in your lane and just run as fast as you can. So that's typically what I try to do when I see a hole, I just hit it and just try to go score a touchdown. You know? and now, the, a guy that uh, may be leading you here on offense in 2015, Coach Carragher told me earlier today that don't know who the quarterback is going to be for the Spartans for sure yet, but Joe Gray, a guy who saw plenty of time last year on some preseason watch lists, going to be competing for the job. Last year actually tied a Mountain West record with five straight games of throwing for 300 yards or more. So the guy can get it done, has got it done. What does he bring to the table if he's ultimately the guy that, uh, that wins the starting job? What does Joe Gray mean to this team? And when he's on, how good can he be? Joe can be, man, he could sling the rock. He's a, a great quarterback. And the fact that he's the ultimate competitor only adds to his ability. So I think um, he's ready to take that role on as a full-time quarterback, and he's going to do a lot of good things next season. We'll come back to the offense here in a bit, but let's talk to a guy who was recruited as a quarterback, but some guy named David Fales was, was taking snaps under center for the Spartans. So they moved him to another very key position, linebacker Christian Tago, who one of the top linebackers in the conference, certainly one of the top tacklers in the conference. What has made you the defensive player that you are? Because you come in hoping to play quarterback, but very quickly they, they recognize this guy can play defense, did it in high school. What makes a solid linebacker, and how have you had to maybe adjust yourself to the college level to make you the elite linebacker that you are today? Oh, well, I think I'm, I'm the ultimate uh, competitor. You know, whatever I do, I just want to give it my all, give 110%. And, uh, you know, playing in high school, playing both ways, offense and defense, I think that gave me a little edge coming here to uh, you know, be recruited as an athlete and be able to play either offense or defense here. There's a chance that you could really be a disruptor once again this year because the secondary for the Spartans is going to be a strength in the defense with Pruitt, Wallace, and McKnight all returning. How much will they help you kind of, you know, pin your ears back and really go after the quarterback? Because you know things are going to be taken care of and locked down in the secondary. Yeah, well, no, it's, it's a great feeling knowing that those guys are coming back. You know, we have, I think, three out of four guys coming back in the secondary. And, uh, you know, they hold it down for us. And the front seven, we have to do our job, you know, getting to the quarterback, rushing passes to get those guys, you know, more uh, hurries on the quarterback, give them a chance to go attack the ball. Defensively last year, the Spartans were one of the top pass defenses in the country. Why was that? Why were you guys so proficient in the pass defense? Running became a little bit of an issue, the, the run defense, but pass defense was stellar. Yeah, you know, I think we have a great uh, DB and a safety coach in uh, Dante Williams. You know, he's just a great guy. You know, He knows what he's talking about. He has his... Uh, DB guys just 100% concentrated on what he's teaching them. And talking with Coach Carragher earlier today, he had mentioned that the big focus for the Spartans on offense this year is proficiency inside the 20. Red zone offense is going to be very much a focus here in camp and through the season because last year you guys moved the ball very well outside the 20s, get in the 20s, scoring became a problem. How do you guys fix that? No, red zone is always a little bit tough for the score, but I think we're going to focus a little bit more on the details and being 
more um, consistent as far as finishing off drives. So I'm sure during training camp, we're going to get a lot of red zone type situations coming up. Now back in uh, April of 2014, you guys had a teammate and Jared Leaf was involved in apartment fire and, and burned very bad. And it, you know, the reports were, were pretty tough. He was in bad shape. He's made his way all the way back. Yeah. He's back on the football field with you guys. How much does that mean to have, you know, a, a brother like him back standing alongside you knowing what he went through to get back and, and to line up with you at linebacker for the Spartans. Yeah, you know, it means a lot. He was really put into a really tough situation. It's uh, really inspiring to see, you know, what he overcame. You know, he couldn't have been here today, but, you know, he came back, and now he's back in one of our starting linebacker positions, and it's uh, truly a testament to his character of how strong-willed he is, and it's just, it's just amazing to see him go through the whole process. Yeah, Coach Carragher spoke about the brotherhood uh, of Spartan football and how you guys really have, have come together as a family. I mean, you guys in, in the past couple of years have had a couple of, of uh, places where you've had to come together. Anthony Largeville comes to, um, comes to mind, and you guys have rallied, and you guys are a family under Coach Carragher. Mm -hmm. How much does that mean to this uh, to, to you guys to, to know that you have a guy that really wants everyone to rally and everyone to, to bind together, especially in times like this? You know, um, it's awesome because Coach Carragher always preaches us, to us that we, sh we need 105 guys in, not 95. We need everybody involved. And the brotherhood that we kind of share is like no other. So I'm really excited um, for this season to see what we can do because we have such a strong uh, bond between everyone. Well, when you guys do hit the field, if Jared Leaf is, is with you guys, you guys will We'll face a schedule that, that stacks up like this. We'll take a look at that schedule here in a moment. But you guys get, got games at Oregon State. And then once again, mm -hmm. you're going to go to Auburn. You did that last year. You got the taste of SEC football. You, you, you've seen a stage like that, the, the ruckus crowds. What did you learn in that game that you can take with you this game as you go down to Auburn on October 3rd? You know, just uh, kind of quieting down everything else around us and really focusing on the game. You know, of course, they have a lot of fans, but, you know, when you can focus on the game of football and really be in tune with everybody else on your team on the field, you'll be able to do a lot uh, more things as far as being productive on offense and defense. And Christian, you guys go to, uh, to Oregon State, but you also have games at home against BYU. You have San Diego State at home. You have Boise State at home. Some of the who's who across college football and certainly in the Mountain West is going to be coming to, to your stadium and can really energize Spartan football. How much do you look forward to having those big games in your house? Oh, you know, I'm, I'm just so excited to be able to play those teams. Uh, a couple of those teams are, are rivalry games, you know. It means a lot to be able to showcase what we have in front of our, uh, our home stand. And before we let you go, Tyler, I understand that you've got a talent with, with some clippers, some shears. Yeah. You, you're, you're the team barber. How many haircuts do you perform on a weekly basis during football season? Uh, so it's a little bit uh, less during football season, but in the off season, I can get anywhere from, you know, 20 to, you know, on a good week, 40 cuts uh, in one week. So, yeah, I've been doing it for a while. So it's just something I've been, you know, working on and it's hopefully something I could uh, actually aspire to do in the uh, near future. I understand you're pretty good. Yeah. Is he good? Would you let him touch, your, you, you, you let uh, him touch your hair? Yeah, no. Yeah, no, um, he's, got the, he's got the hair thing going on. So, uh, yeah, no, that, that's awesome. So I don't want to mess with that. All right, yeah. that's fair enough. Yeah. Appreciate you guys taking some time here in Las Vegas for us here on the Mountain West Network. Nice job, and, and good luck this season to the Spartans. Right, thank, thank you. you. We appreciate Christian it. Tago and Tyler Irvin of San Jose State. When we come back live here from the Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas, we're going to speak with the UNLV Rebels. Going to be joined by Blake Decker and Penny Vea. That's coming up live right after this.